what is going on sky squad we are back in the building baby we are back in the building happy saturday to y'all i know it's a little bright in here i got my blinds open i got the light on so i need to take care of one of them but i'm not i'm not about to jump about the frame right now but listen happy saturday y'all welcome back we about to discuss a quite a few things we're talking basketball wives we got some tea on the new season okay then we're going to be talking ladies who list. But before we get into that, y'all know how we do it on this channel. Go ahead and drop that location down in that good chatterization, okay? Drop it in the location, in the uh, in the chat. Um, side note, I want to shout out my boy uh, Louie and his brand Fifth Logic. I'm wearing one of their uh, faux pony hair uh, uh, jackets today, you know, supporting my, support my people, y'all. Uh, who is in the building? We got Tennessee in the his naive. We got ATL, baby. Urban, Texas, South Carolina, Florida. I see you, North Carolina. North Carolina is all up in through here. Montana. Hey, we'll, Milwaukee, Birmingham, Alabama. Okay, 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 Texas. I see you, Saverna Park. Hey, hey. How we doing? How we doing? How we doing, y'all? Listen. Y'all ready for Love and Marriage Huntsville to come on back? Y'all, are y'all ready for Love and Marriage Huntsville to come on back onto your screens? Well, if you are, okay, um, we got something for y'all, okay? So we got a little social media special coming on at y'all tonight. As you guys can see, Funky Dineva, we got Dr. Heavenly on here giving us all the tea about everything that's gone down on social media with regards to Love and Marriage Huntsville. This comes on tonight at 8 p.m. This is on the Love and Marriage Huntsville page, my boo over there on Instagram. So y'all make sure y'all set y'all DVRs, okay, for the Love and Marriage Huntsville social mania, okay? Special part one comes on tonight at 8 p.m. I know I'm going to be sitting in front of the television with my popcorn and my my um my my bottle of uh of, of Pepsi, okay, my bottle of Pepsi. Um, side note, <laughs> I'm looking at y'all comments. It's gonna be good. Y'all know it's gonna be good and juicy. Y'all know it's gonna be good and juicy, okay. Um, shout out to our friends over at Love and Marriage Huntsville on Instagram um, for posting that. And you guys will have seen that if you watched last night's episode of Ladies Who List Atlanta, okay? The previews came out last night on the show. I I did not see them um, last night because I, I watched the episode for Love it, Ladies Who List Atlanta today, just a few minutes ago. So I just finished watching it, and I just happened to see it. So listen, y'all, let's get into this Basketball Wives news that we got going on okay now we've been waiting on this new season to begin for quite some time and i feel in my spirits as though you know they've been filming for about a year okay it's been a while it's been a long time and you know typically we don't have to wait too long for a new season of basketball wives to begin so I just happened to be doing a little scrollerization through my pages and my good boo over at the BBWT Inc. had then posted some shots of some of the ladies doing some filming. OK, so as you guys can see here, um, you, you got Brandy Maxio and Brooke Bailey and, you know, it says my babes, Brooke Bailey Inc. back at it. OK. So I'm like, oh, y'all, y'all. Now I could have swore I had seen some posts out there indicating that y'all had finished the filming, but it looks like they're back to filming again. All right. Okay. That's what it felt like, Mel J. So here we go. If you're looking, if you lean in, okay, and you look a little closer, you'll see what I pulled up on the screen here. Because there was a commenter who said, in my mind, the season canceled at this point. With the laughing emojis. And so then the BBWT Inc. responded says, three different teams of producers brought in. So like a revolving door, that's why the season is behind. They fired the original producers and got newbies. 
and don't know much about the cast, etc. Um, side note, my boo at the BBWT Inc. also has a YouTube page. So go ahead and follow if y'all ain't already done so, because I've been I've been saying get your butt on that good YouTube for a minute now. OK, and y'all know we're going to support over here. Um, But that's interesting to me. You know, it's very interesting to me. Now, is it surprising to me that they got a new team of producers in? No, it's not surprising at all, because whoever let them get away with last season's shenanigans, um, something need to be done about them. Because last season was an epic fail of a season, if you ask me. I know it was supposed to be meant to wrap up several people's, you know, storylines and 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 pave the way for some exits. But to me, it was just especially with the revelations that we was getting online from OG, it was just it was just piss poor editing. I hate to say it. Sorry, not sorry, but we got to call it like we like we see it. So, it's not it's not surprising to me that they would have in you know, a whole bunch of different editors and things like and, and, and production crews coming in to try to figure out what's going to make things work. But you do need someone who is running the show that has an idea of what this franchise is going to look like, even as it moves forward. OK, Tina, thank you so much for the super chat. Tina says, hey, Richie, houseway. I hope these ladies know how to act mature. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. OK, so we got that bit of information going on. And I and I hate to see it because, you know, oftentimes, you know, we'll see shows get a new production company after maybe a season isn't received too well. And usually that production company is able to kind of come in and clear things up and, and get things back on the right track. But this is kind of concerning to me because, you know, ultimately we've heard a lot about the drama that's been going on behind the scenes. And if you haven't, we're going to tell you right now. OK. Now, if you guys, again, head on over to the best, the BBWT Inc., you'll also see, you know, Malaysia and Jackie hanging out at the club or whatever, or wherever they were last night. Not last night, but about a day ago or two days ago or, so, or something like that. So you, you got this group right here. Um, from what we understand, a lot of the ladies are not really feeling Malaysia especially the ones that have come back in this season. As you guys did see, Brooke Bailey was hanging out with Brandy Maxio. And then we had also heard that there was the altercation with Brandy, excuse me, uh, with Malaysia and Brooke Bailey. But that's not the only altercation that Brooke Bailey was allegedly involved in. So then when you take things a step further, because, you know, <laughs> I'm always scouring the, the interwebs, okay? Um... You head on over to Jay's reality blog on the Twitter, right? And this information was also uh, gotten from the BBWT Inc. regarding the Basketball Wives Season 10. And it says here that these are the alleged battles that we have to sort of wait to see on this coming season. We got Brooke versus Nia, okay? We got Brooke versus Naria. So Brooke is apparently going to get into it with the with the two sisters. We got Brooke versus Malaysia. And then we got this bit of information that nobody wanted to film with Malaysia except for Naria, Jer Nia, Naria, and Jackie. Now, as you guys may recall, Nia and Naria were brought in last season, and they're on a good foot with Malaysia at this point. Then we also have Brandy versus Malaysia. Jackie is allegedly the peacemaker, and Malaysia and Jackie are good, as we just saw in those photos right there. This is the bit of information that came from the BBWT Inc. Brooke got into an altercation with the sisters, and then later Malaysia. None of the ladies beside the sisters and Jackie wanted to film with Malaysia. The ladies wanted to ice out Malaysia. Malaysia and Brandy got into it. Malaysia and Jackie are good, but Jackie is the peacemaker this time. Now, this idea of wanting to ice out somebody on a cast is, is so very played out to me. And I and I hate when I see stuff like this happen. Um, awards, uh, a Ward says, hi, Richie, sending love from Louisiana. Hey, boo, how you doing? Thank you so much for the super chat. Now, I don't like this notion of, you know, trying to ice people out. It makes the show not boring. And to be honest with you, I would start to, if I was on a production company, I would, and, and if I was the network, I would find um, any star who wanted to try to ice out another star. I would find them. I would dock their pay. They would not make some coin. The check would be short this week. 
OK, it would be very short and it would be a hefty fine. It would actually be a whole episode's worth of pay, because at the end of the day, the reason why you're on this cast is because it's an ensemble cast and you do not have the right to ice anyone out. Now, you may not want to hang out with them. You may not want to you might not want to speak to them. Um, but at the end of the day, you're not going to not film a group scene with this person because they're there. It's just not going to happen. And I feel like production companies and networks, they really do need to start cracking down on that type of thing. Because what it does to the show is it brings down the quality of the show and it makes the show a lot less interesting. So when cast members think that they're trying to ice out a character because they want to essentially probably get them fired or have them be no longer a part of the cast, what they're doing is a complete and total disservice to that person because what ends up happening in the end, typically, is that the audience usually rallies around whoever is deemed as the underdog and they take that person's side and it usually backfires on the person that is trying to ice the other characters out. So I don't like it. It's whack. Exactly. It's super whack to me. Okay? Super whack. So um, that's the tea on what's going on with Basketball Wives, the new season. I wish they would hurry up and get it together so that we can have some type of, you know, I, I mean, we need some more content from VH1 Basketball Wives. We just, we really do at this point. And it's been such a long period of time. Where is the trailer? Shawnee, where is the trailer? All right. Now, we got to discuss Ladies Who List, okay? We got to discuss Ladies Who List. Let me pull up my notes. This episode to me, and I'm going to go ahead and be honest and truthful with you. This episode to me seemed like, a, I know it was meant to wrap up the season, but it definitely felt like it was like, oh, let me, let's just, oh, let's throw these scenes up in here and we're going to close this thing on out and keep it pushing. Okay. Now, one of the things that I will tell you is, and I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and bust your bubble for those of you guys who have not watched it, is that at the end credits, okay, at the end credits, we get this notification that Crystal and Robin are no longer friends. Hmm. After all that, they had de decided to end their friendship. That's what it say in the in the end credits. So we're gonna walk our way up to that point um, through what felt to me like um, I can't really call it like a hastily thrown together finale. And I hate to say that. I hate to say it, but that's what it felt like to me. Um, if you happen to see this episode, okay. We're going to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, all right? Now, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do, okay? Hit the notification bell button and then join the texting community. The number is right here, so you can text me, and I will add you to the texting notification group so you can get a text message every time a new video drops. Now, with that being said, for those of you guys who are new here, 1 being the lowest rated and then... 10 being the highest rated. So, of course, as we're going to rate this episode, we're not just rating it as a typical episode. We are going to rate it as the season finale of season one and what we expect from our season finales, right? And to be quite honest with you guys, I'm really on par with much of what you guys are saying. I'm going to give it a 6.5. And this is probably one of the lowest ratings I have given in quite some time, okay? Okay quite some time and i don't really know what it no actually you know what i'm gonna give it, i'm gonna raise it i'm gonna give it a seven because there were some things in this episode that i really did like so i'm gonna give it a seven for that i take it back i take it back i'm gonna give it a seven because there were some moments that i felt like were really good and i will tell you what they are right now number one i wanted to see as we start off the episode, and the episode is called Polly Party. And mind you, when I got off the line with, with Crystal the other day, I don't know how many of you caught that interview. When I got off line with, with Crystal, Kimbro the other day when we did our live, I was thinking to myself, 
I needed to ask her about the poly party. I was kicking myself, kicking myself when I forgot that. And I thought about it as I was, because, you know, when I do an interview with somebody, I try not to hold them for longer than 30 minutes unless they have okayed that, right? But typically in my conversations, I always schedule it for 20 five to 30 minutes, right? Because I feel like that's enough time to usually get some background, ask some questions about the show and any future endeavors that they have that they may want to promote, right? But uh, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, dang it. I forgot to ask about the poly party because I had to ask her so many questions about so many other things. Now, this episode was titled The Poly Party and we got a lot of the poly, but it was really not a party, okay? Um, But... Uh, the reason why, and as I digressed a whole lot, I wanted to give this episode a little bit higher than the 6.5, as I know some people were saying that I was being generous, was because there were elements of this that I felt like the the biggest thing that I, I, that I like about this show is you cannot say on this show that these ladies did not give y'all some listings, okay? You can't say that. This show gave listings, Houses were sold. So we got to see some other people who had some interesting stories. Like when Kiana was closing with Corey Hayes, she said that he was a serial entrepreneur. What I wanted to do was, and I hadn't had time to, and I'm going to do it when I finish, I want to look up who Corey Hayes is because y'all know I like to know how people make their money. Sometimes so I can learn how to do it too, okay? I ain't gonna even lie to y'all about that because, I mean, there's so many ways out here to make money, people, and I feel like when somebody comes on the screen and they got a they got a, um, they got got um an in and a connect and a plug on how to make the money, we need to be learning what they're doing. So, oh, interestingly, what they have done with this show is they have introduced us to some people that I feel like we need to know. So, for that, I felt like I'm gonna add a 0.5 to it because we did get listings on this. Now, I know a lot of people felt differently about selling Tampa. Like, we didn't get to see a lot of closings. We didn't get to see a lot of this. Ladies Who List gave you all of that, okay? They did not They did not skimp on the closings, which I absolutely love, okay? Um, the other thing, and I noticed this too, what happened to Kira? I felt like we didn't really get much story from Kira as the episodes went on. She was missing from the rodeo throwdown, okay? She was absent at tonight's finale party. Um, And I'm going to tell you guys the truth. When you are on a reality show, unless I feel like she did not, she just didn't care to be there. When you're on a reality show, typically you want to try to make it to as many scenes as possible because you want to be featured in the episodes. When you start missing a whole lot of scenes, that could mean essentially that you end up missing out on some pay, potentially, because you don't know how the episodes are going to be put together. So you really don't want to miss anything unless you're just not invited, right? So that was interesting and odd to me as well. But anyway, let's get down to business with rating the episode because as thrown together as it felt, we at least did get to see that we were going to get a reunion, okay? Which we kind of already knew. All right. Um, Kiana is closing at the beginning of the episode. Kiana, um, Kiana closed a on a home, okay, where the seller's name was Corey Hayes, who was a serial entrepreneur, and he's upgrading. But we also learned that Kiana's real uh, Kiana's uh, firm is representing the buyer as well. So <laughs> they're going to make that cut on both ends, okay? Now, the buyer is Jamal Aaron, and I kind of wondered who he was too, right? What does he do? What you know? Because this house, I mean, Kiana called it a starter home, but I was like, <laughs> start where? This is the finish line home for me because I'm like, this thing looks huge. OK, anyway, um, they celebrate by making it rain with a money gun. Oh, and Tiffany is there, too, uh, the closing attorney. So they celebrate by making it rain with a money gun. And I'm like, yes, this is what I'm talking. I want I want to see money falling from the sky, baby. That's what I want to see when I watch these shows. So let's see it falling from the sky. I want to see you rolling around in the money. I want to see you dive into a pool of money. That's what I want to see when I'm watching these shows. Anyway. Finally, Kira does show up. Okay, Tiana and Kira are doing a wine tasting. 
and I wanted to try to get the name of this place, but I didn't see the name of it. So if anybody happened to see it, um, yeah, you didn't see it because she won't there. Okay, <laughs> she was not there. Um, I was trying to see where the wine, uh, what the name of the wine place was. Again, if you happen to see it, let me know what the name of it was in the chat because I didn't catch it. Um, they do actually buy some wine. Kira relays to Crystal that Kira relays to Tiana that Crystal made a proposition for 50% off of her clients at closing, which was enticing. But Kira doesn't know what to do. What I like that, what I do like that Tiana said to her was this: you know when you're being sold. And she said, it's like this. When you go out on a date, you know the difference between a dude that's trying to take you to third and, and fourth base. OK, hit a home run and take you to the sacky sack. And, you know, when somebody's trying to get to know you, use your best judgment in this situation. And I'm assuming by by Chris Kira not attending that finale party, she ended up using that judgment and not showing up and saying, I'm, I'm not going to give you my business. That's what it felt like to me. And for those of you guys who did miss the interview with Crystal, I did ask her about, you know, getting uh, asked, you know, trying to, you know, talk to care about getting that business and i mean you know what it boils down to for me it seems like even as i spoke to tiffany and then listening to crystal it sounds like this is something that could be done but for some people it's just like what we felt ourselves some people are not gonna like it and some people you know like like crystal said it's just business that's what it was it's up to your perception to tell to, to to figure out how you feel about it, right? Um, Ashley, thank you so much for the soup. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, boo. That was so nice. Thank you so much. I want some pounds, baby. Give me some pounds. Give me all the pounds, okay? Um, so I can get back over to London and do some shopping. Okay, so anyway, um, Kira ends up saying she's gonna pray about the whole thing. I guess she prayed and the Lord told her not to go, but um. She ends up telling Tiana about getting invited to the poly party. And I've heard so much about this poly party. I can't wait to get there. Okay. But again, of course, it's not really a party. It's a, more of a picnic. I guess that's what we would call it. Okay. Um, anyway, Kira thought this was a New York thing. And honestly, Tiana didn't even know what polyamorous meant. All right. Because she's like, not my man. Okay. Um, Speaking of, you know what I did like about T when Tiana was at the end, when she was closing her deal, her man was standing right there and he was looking at her. She looked and as she as he was working out as she was working. I said, that's love right there. That man love him some Tiana. You could just tell by the way he was looking at her. He was looking at her like he wanted to sop her up with a biscuit. And that's the type of if if your man or your woman ain't looking at you like that. Send them back, okay? We don't want it around here. That's not what you want. You want, that's, I was like, oh, man, you better stand at the door and stare at your wife, stare at her down, okay? And then why does being polyamorous, what does that have to do with a, being a New York type of thing? Is it is it rumored that all the people in New York are just dating each other? Because I had not heard that. I hadn't heard that. Honestly, I will tell you, Tiana has some really good scenes when I think about the season overall, and she got the money scene right at the end, which I thought was very interesting. She got the best closeout scene, even though she didn't get a title, a card at the end. She got the she got the she got the pimps, the pimp scene at the end. Got it. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. She got the pimp scene at the end. All right. Um, but she's not surprised that. Crystal knows those people, okay? Those people being the polys, all right? Side, side, side note, it, are there any polyamorous peoples in the um in the chatterization? I mean, just let me know. Just type, I am poly, if you want to, in the chat, because we got a few questions for you, okay? Now, speaking of the poly party or the poly picnic or the
with the amount of people that it felt more like a pity party, to be honest with you. And I'm not and I'm not trying to be shady, but it I it was it was not what I expected, right? Now it was it was interesting. And it seemed to go on for a very long time based on the amount of notes that I took. Probably a little too long, but this is probably also why the episode was called Poly Party and not something else. I don't really know. But what I will say is um, the poly meet, the poly meetup. That's what it felt more like, a little meetup. You know what I'm saying? Because it really weren't that many people there. I thought it was going to be a party party, like a house party. That's what I thought. Give me party, all right? Crystal's party at the end is what I thought the poly party was going to be. It was not. It was definitely a picnic um, in the park, no less. All right. And I was trying to figure out what they was eating. Anyway, they head to the poly party, Crystal and Robin. And they get there and immediately Zane, the man, I guess, that had invited um, Crystal to the event is... is I guess he's trying to draw her into the into the coven, okay? And Robin immediately is asking him, "Where's your other girlfriend? Where's she at?" So we learn that the other woman that Zane is with is actually married to a man who is also who also has his own girlfriends or whatever. And um but she couldn't make it to the event because today is family time. I probably, I bet she probably just didn't want to be on film. Okay. That's probably it. But anyway, she wanted to be on family time. Um, and so he had to respect that even though he don't always, you know, even though sometimes he'd be in his feelings about it. Meanwhile, Robin is just listening to him talk about this other woman that he is dating, who was married to a man that is dating other women. Okay. It was fascinating. So, he introduces them to the group or whatever. Robin wants to know about all the connections at the table, and they are all connected, okay? It's about five of them there, but they all, in, in some way, shape, or form, they mismatch and then, and then popped up with each other in some type of... And please, do not listen. If you are of the poly people, I am not against the poly people. Please don't take as, what I'm saying as being against the poly people because I'm not against the poly people, Okay. I am simply telling you exactly what went down from my eyes, okay? Anyway, because I don't really know any of the poly people, but I mean, heck, I might know poly people, but I don't know it. I don't know. That's why I'm asking y'all in the chat. So anyway, um, so she's asking questions and she's, and finally she says, well, you know, well, so how will it work, Crystal, now that you have your new man? How's it going to work with Zane right here? And Crystal's like, girl, I hadn't told him about my new man. So now she got to go off and have a side ponderosa um, about her new situation with Polly Zane. OK, so as she takes Zane to the side, Zane is like, you know, I mean, he is acting a little territorial with it or whatever. And it's interesting to me to, for him to be so territorial, given that he's dating some other people's or whatever. Anyway, Crystal got to tell him, like, listen, man, I'm, I started talking to somebody. Now, she said she was talking to somebody, but at that point in time, it don't sound like they have gone out. So that ain't, that ain't your man yet. But we did see in the end credits that she is now in a serious relationship. And she was with a man who was tall um, uh, and bald and with a beard. OK. But he was not saying. All right. And, I, and he probably not at the poly party either. But anyway. Meanwhile, back over at the table where Robin is inquisitive and inquiring and, and trying to get into all up into the details, we learn that it's relationships and, and, and with his and hers and hit and hers and hers. And it, there's just a lot of sharing happening at the table. And, you know, they really try to school Robin about the lifestyle or whatever. And Robin admits that she's open to learning and unlearning and learning and unlearning and, you know, and finding out maybe two people can make her happy. She don't know. I don't know who. who I mean, who does know? I mean, is it is it male or female? Because I was like, Robin, where, which, where are you going with this? We also learned that Robin was a stripper at one point in time. I like let me tell you something. I like when somebody can will just tell you their tea and just be like, yeah, I, I did it. And OK, 
And that's why I learned some things about my life and some and some things about myself. OK, my only thought was, did you make some money? If you did. OK, cool. Let's 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 get this thing popping. OK, so she's open. She's open now. All right. Now, they ask her if she's ever had a three way. And she's like, three way freeway. What? I No, mm -mm, I don't know. Have I? Mm. <laughs> well, they did. I will. I did watch two people and they asked me to, you know, get with them. But I, I took off running. And I did not do it. OK. And then she says, no, I haven't done it. And so later she's talking about whether or not she would actually, you know, in her confessional, she's like, mm, maybe I will get two husbands. I don't know, because, you know, I got enough to go around at this point. So anyway. The pilot party is over. Thank God. All right. Because it went on for a very long time. Now, I was like, for there to be only about six people at this party, it is happening for a, like it, it, it was like a 30 minute pilot party on the episode that should have probably been only like five minutes. OK. Meanwhile, back at Crystal's firm, we learned that she is going to be throwing a mega masquerade customer client appreciation gala. OK. They discuss closings at the table or whatever. Um, and we learn, you know, that's where we get the the nuggets that are being thrown at us um, that Kiana and Robin do close with the crystal. OK. Now, the party is only for the people that has been closing with them for the last six months. And I started and I had to wonder to myself, now, if I'm an agent, which I will be soon. Um, and if I ain't closed with you in the past six months, am I mad that I didn't get an invite to this party? Because I'm like, what if I do close with y'all sometimes, but not just in the past six months and I didn't get an invite? Should I be mad? I don't know. But anyway. Over down to the um, Macedonia Park, Tiana. OK, Tiana. You hit the nail on the head. Perfect example of good TV. Anyway. <laughs> I'm looking at y'all comments. Meanwhile, Tiana is at the Macedonia Park. Now, she was telling us something about this park. I don't know much about it, but I don't know what it meant to her. And I couldn't get it. And I didn't feel like rewinding. But she made it a point to mention it for some reason. I thought that she had bought a whole park. No. Um, what is really, maybe she did, I don't know, but what is really happening is her husband stops by the office to look her up and down and like she wanted, like he want to sop her up with a biscuit as she's on the phone because she actually got, um, Quinetta, the architect slash designer that she was, you know, looking at the barn house for that they had the rodeo showdown at, um, the offer was uh, accepted on the home. And I was, and I, again, I just was marvel at the, at the way I was like, this man is looking at her like, like she is something to eat. And I was like, that is, that is some love right there. Okay. Anyway, it's the night of the Kimbro appreciation experience. Okay. Um, she opened up the invite to all the ladies. Okay. But y'all know Tiffany not coming. Um, and we learned that, that Kira ain't coming either. Now here's why Kira ain't coming. Y'all ever had this happen to y'all before? And I've had it happen to me. Actually, I had it happen to me when I was about to go to South Africa. I went to Theory, the Theory Outlet. I don't know if y'all know what that story is. I don't really shop there that much because the clothes are expensive. But I went to the Theory Outlet. And, you know, I had bought this, um, you know, this nice little, um, it ain't like a track suit. It's like a, 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 almost like some type of jogging suit or something like that. And, you know, when I the lady was talking so much and doing so much while I was there and, and she spent about 10 minutes wrapping this stuff up. And I was like, why are you wrapping it up? I just want it in the bag and I want to go. But anyway, she spent so much time wrapping it up. She forgot to take the little sensor out of it. So I couldn't even wear that on my trip. Anyway, this is apparently what happened to Kira. She had bought a dress for the for the um, for the gala. And they had left the sensor in the, in the in the dress. I don't know why she couldn't just take it back to the um to the store. But anyway. She took that as a sign from the Lord that she should not go to the Crystal Masquerade Gala. OK, so she ain't come. Now, I don't know Kira like that. And I'm going to have to ask her if I ever get a chance to talk to her. But what I want to ask her is, did you not go in solidarity with your homegirl, Tiffany, that you typically close with? Because, I mean, that would be. Maybe a potentially a valid reason for not going to the event, but otherwise, I mean, you're on a reality TV show, and I want to get my check and I want to make my my coins, so I'm gonna show up at the event too, right? <clears throat> Don't you hate that? I hate it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> T 
Tiana lets Robin and Kiana know that, you know, Kiera, Kiera had told her that Crystal had been wooing her and whining her and dining her with the fish sticks and hush puppies and stuff. And Kiana was like, now, wait a minute. I ain't been whining and dining in a minute. The whining and dining happened at first, but I need to be whined and dined now. Okay. Don't worry, Kiana. She about to she about to she about to woo you back into the fold. Okay, don't worry. Your time is coming. She got an award for you. Um, we see Crystal's mom is there and really happy for her. Robin comes up and greets them, and they're just now meeting. Crystal tells her mom that Robin is such a genuine friend. It's a shame how that ended, and um, how they motivate each other. Crystal takes to the stage and thanks everybody for coming. She gives Robin an award for something. Kiana gets an award for something. And Tiana's just kind of sitting there because she's like, I don't close with you. Um, and I thought to myself, this is a really good show. Overall, this is a really, really good show. We got to see a lot of real estate happen. We got to see a lot of things that we may not typically get to see on some of these other real estate shows. And I was like, I really like this show and I hope they get a season two. Anyway. Um, we get the closing montages of scenes, and I'm going to tell you what happened. Robbins is up first. She reflects on the traumatic dinner and vows that she's coming back bigger and better and badder, okay, than ever before. We also learned that she did start her own brokerage with four other um, agents. I don't know who they are because they didn't, we didn't get to see no photos of them. And that she and Crystal have ended their friendship. And I was like, oh, dang. I mean, you know, I didn't get that bit of information when I interviewed Crystal because I did not think to ask. But what I did ask Crystal was about that whole statement that Robin made about her allegedly being upset or being suspicious that Robin might have been trying to get with her man before. So we did talk about that. Next, um, we get a scene with Tiffany with her kids. And she says she's still, you know, fighting the fight against anxiety. She is opening a second law office in Alabama. Kiana seeing she's questioning whether or not she wants a child or if society wants her to have a child as she kind of goes through the IVF stuff that materials that they've given her. And we learn that they are pursuing their second IVF treatment. It's unfortunate that we won't be able to follow this journey on the show. But however, if you see Kiana on on the Instagram, you will know Kiana has not slowed down not one single bit. She's over there to the London with the earn your leisure peoples and she is doing the doggone thing over there. All right. Next, we get a scene with Crystal who wants an exclusive husband and she's we learned that she's in a committed relationship and she, too, is expanding to Florida and Alabama. And I'm like, all of y'all going to Alabama and Florida? What is going on down there? Is the housing market booming there? Because if so, we need to be investing. OK, so then Kira, we learn, is in the final stages of building her new home. And she, too, has applied to sell in Florida. What's going on in Florida? OK, so then Tiana gets the money shot at the end. OK, it was this scene basically of what looked like. Was it a closing or something? Now, I'm saying she got the money shot and I can't even remember what happened. All I remember was it was just a bad shot. I mean, it was like a music video. She was walking up and I was like, oh, yes. What you about to do? What are you doing? Is this a new home? But um, that's the end. And then we get a trailer for the reunion. All right. That's going to be next week. Now, I don't know if this reunion is going to be two parts or one. But the ladies did look nice and Kiana was noticeably absent. She said, <laughs> deuces, y'all. Um, <clears throat> now, I did tag on in another realtor who is in the Atlanta area named Ambria Simone. I said on TV, y'all need to look at Ambria Simone um, as someone who is just ripe. <clears throat> Cap, you already know I'm trying to get back to Florida. Ooh, right. I'm trying to get back to Florida with a, with a quickness, y'all. Y'all have no idea, really. This is, I, I just, I'm, I, I love DC, but um, I need to be where it is warm and toasty, and there's some ocean waters and things. Now I'm gonna pull up. Ambria's um Instagram right here because I want y'all to know who it is that I'm um you know that I'm rooting for and I'm sure y'all know of some other people this is her Instagram right here Ambria Simone luxury realtor okay Georgia 
She was on BET's Chasing Destiny, which I did review when I was at After Buzz TV. So she's already got the TV experience. She's got a look. Come on now. Come on now. she got a look. She's giving look and giving body. I mean, it, it, she to me, it, it's, a, it's a yes for me. It's a yes for me. So um, if y'all look in the cast for next season, here we go. All right. Mardi Gras started, started in Mobile, Alabama. We know what's up down here. Yes. Oh, I need to get back down to the water, y'all. I need to get back down to the water. Okay. Oh, I need it in my life. It's a lot of land undeveloped in Alabama. Mm -hmm. We about to see. They should. I mean, I hope, you know. We might need to get her. On, we, we might need to interview her. Let's, I mean, we're we going to let, what? We, let's speak it into existence. I feel like we spoke Marlo's Peach into existence. I mean, why not? What else can we accomplish, y'all? You know what I'm saying? What else can we do? Put it in the atmosphere. All right. Um, That's it, y'all. That's all I got. Um, guys, listen, thank you so much for rocking with us on Ladies Who List Atlanta for this season. I'm glad y'all loved it as much as I did. We will be back. I will likely be back on Monday with the Salt Lake City review. And then we'll have Love and Marriage Huntsville coming. Oh, and do, guys, don't forget to tune in tonight to the Love and Marriage Huntsville Social Mania Part one special that is coming on tonight at 8 p.m. on own. Please listen. Um, watch out for that. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything. I'm just loving uh, reviewing y'all some of y'all's comments. They are expensive. They are very expensive. Uh, yes, I have not been to New Orleans at all. I want to go. Am I reviewing the social media? I don't know if I'll review it per se. I don't know. It depends. I need to take tomorrow off because I do need to do some studying for a real estate class. Let me tell y'all something. These books right here. Y'all, it's no joke. It is no joke. I'm like overwhelmed. <sighs> um, yes, I'm so excited to see Funky and Dr. Heavenly. <laughs> Not the basketball baby mamas. Yes, let's watch. Let's watch and tune in and support our people. I mean, class is going good. It's very fast paced, thank God. So it seems like the class kind of moves quickly, but I did miss the first class. So I have to make that up this week, which means I have three classes this week. And I'm just like, I'm, it's, it's feeling overwhelming. No, it's through Long and Foster. I moved here to be closer to family. Potentially, listen, everybody else is getting their license in, in uh, Florida. I might as well try to. Okay. Um, oh, thank you so much. Um, my skin routine, I, you know, honestly, I, um, before I get on camera, I, I, I wash my face and I use, I'll tell you guys something I use. Um, I have some great friends who are makeup artists 
And because I have oily skin, I use this stuff right here. And it's a, um, it's just a primer. And it just makes your face look like not so oily. It's, it's clear. You just put it on your skin before, like you could put it on before you go out. Um, you know, I'm gonna relax in the bathtub later. I've taken a bath just about every day this week. So I am, so I'm not so stressed out. Would I do a reality TV show? No, mm -mm. I have done one and I'm very, I, I like what they did with it and I'm good on that. Um, I might do commentary for something on TV or I might, you know, talk about something, but I would never actually want to be a cast member on a reality TV show. Um, all right, boo, I got to do, you know, I got to do some Saturday stuff too, y'all. Uh, let me see. I'm just trying to see if I see any more of your questions that you guys may have. Okay. I don't see any more major questions yet. So, um, Y'all know I love y'all. Spend today doing something. Um, oh, okay. I could do this. Right now, I'm watching Inventing Anna on Netflix. And it is really, really good. It's by Shonda Rhimes. Um, Cody, I do have an ebook that I did put together on this. I might do an updated version on that. Or I might do just do like, you know what I was thinking about doing, y'all? I think I might do like a little um a little YouTube masterclass. But I mean, this is what I would tell you if I if I were starting a YouTube channel. I would tell yourself that I would give yourself about 90 days to six months to do videos on the topics that you love, and I would do to be honest with you, people think that they need, they're going to see success in like the first couple of videos they put out. I will put out at least 30 to 50 videos before I started to really judge unless you just happen to take off really fast. But I will give myself 30 to 50 videos before I quit um, a topic or a niche or whatever you want to do. So that's what I would do. Put in the time, put in the effort. It don't cost nothing but your time. And at the end of the day, you will learn a lot about your metrics and then you can go back and tell what you need to double down on. That's what I would do. Um, Lumen is a super good product. Oh, Virginia. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. Let me hop on off of here because I got a bunch to do. Y'all know I love y'all, and I'm going to catch y'all in the next video, baby.